let's open up the curtains to the windows if it is warm where you live and let that spring sunshine fill the home. I am chipping away at my spring to-dos, cleaning, decorating, cooking. To-dos makes it sound like it's all work, but many of these tasks are very much welcomed in our home, especially during a new season. The gardening books are being put out. Many of the rooms neglected during winter are getting a good cleaning. Today we are starting out in the laundry room. I am sprucing this room up a little today. Not with anything too fancy or time consuming or permanent, but it is a very simple space in our home. I still want to enjoy it though, especially now that it is spring, doing a little spring cleaning in here, and I enjoy it much more when it is clean and organized. There's not very much decor, and honestly, it is not designed in any way to be as pretty as a Pinterest laundry room. But by keeping the cabinets organized, the washer and dryer wiped down, and a few little touches, it can be a fun place to do chores. After getting this laundry room spruced up, cleaned a little, I gave it a test run by getting our spring bedding into the washer. I haven't seen any yet, but I know the hummingbirds are coming. They usually go to our back porch, but I really want to be able to sit on the porch with the babies this spring and summer and watch them. And so I am putting out our hummingbird feeders on the front porch. That way I can sit in my rocker and watch the hummingbirds like the little old lady that I am and um, enjoy them this spring and summer. I got two new hummingbird feeders this year. I've always had just some hand-me-down ones or the plastic ones from the Dollar Tree. So this year for Christmas, I got one and a little while later, I went ahead and ordered a second one to match. They are glass and they are an antique style, which I love. These baby goats that I have shared on here before are getting very big. We are almost to the point of weaning and getting them to their new homes. We have a few that are sold already and a few that will be going up for sale soon and um they are just getting so big they're so fun to watch but we have not weaned yet and i have milked as necessary to avoid mastitis in my dairy girls but i have not separated to milk so i am really looking forward to that we built a milk stand we are all ready we just have to get these babies weaned and separated There's not a lot blooming. Everything's starting to bloom, but it's not quite there. And so I am foraging whatever I can for arrangements around the house, for bouquets around the house. Everything's starting to bloom. Our fruit trees in the orchard are starting to bloom. Of course, I will not take cuttings from that, but so are some of our ornamental trees and bushes. I went to my mom's crabapple tree and took some cuttings from it because it was so beautiful. I took a few cuttings from that to put all around our house. I just love this view. I love the ponds in the background there and then having the pasture and the old wood fence posts with the galvanized gates. I just think it is all so beautiful. Like any floral arrangement, I'm just cutting branches off and placing them in there and just playing around with it until I get the right height and look that I am looking for. And I just put these all over the house. I have some on our TV table, I have some on the wood stove, I have several in the kitchen and one on the dining room table just to bring a little bit of spring into our home.
We started off this day like we usually do, making a few fried eggs. And I went ahead and started some potatoes in the oven. This was for dinner later that day, but I wanted to get them pre-cooked so that I could make fried potatoes for dinner. And so my favorite way to do this, this is how my mom has always cooked her fried potatoes, pre-cook them. And then when you're ready to actually make them, you will see that in a little bit, you just fry them up from there. It doesn't take as long and um, it gives a little bit of a different texture than when you fry them from raw and I like that texture better. So I went ahead and popped those in the oven for a couple of hours just to get them nice and soft. I didn't time it. I don't even know what I cooked them on. I just throw them in there, especially if I already have something else going in the oven. And I just cook them until I can easily poke a fork into them. And that is the way that I do that. We were having a very sunshiny spring day. And so I had the windows open and some of the doors open and the sunshine was pouring in, getting my spring cleaning done. So the first thing for this was to make some laundry soap so I could get caught up on my laundry. We had run out. I pretty much always make my own laundry soap unless I get really busy and then we buy a powdered form of laundry soap, but I definitely prefer my homemade. You can use any soap bar. This was kind of my medium level. I used a Fells Napa bar and um, I don't usually do that when I make my own. I usually make my own soap bar as well, cleaning soap bar. I have one at my kitchen sink and then I also make one for my laundry soap, but um, no time for that. So I had these Fells Napa bars and so I just used that. So for my laundry soap, it is just whatever cleaning soap bar you're going to use. Shred it up. You could do this in a food processor to make it easier. I do not have the right food processor to handle <laughs> this full bar, so I just do it by hand. But then you also add baking soda, washing soda, and some form of salt. Shortly after <laughs> all of the sunshine on this day, we started getting reports of bad weather. We live in Arkansas and we live right on the Oklahoma border. And so that means we have lots of tornadoes and strong winds and hail that comes our way, especially in the spring. The weather started to turn and uh, I had the weather station on keeping track of where we were at with the storm. Then I realized we still had to make dinner. And so I quickly made dinner. This is my fast food for when I just don't have a lot of time to cook. And so the electricity had been flickering on and off. I wanted to get supper made before the storm took out my electricity because we are all electricity in our house. And so um, I was very thankful that I prepped those potatoes but this is what I do for a quick meal when we don't necessarily want to pick something up and I don't feel like being in the kitchen for hours. So the first thing is I skinned those cooked potatoes and then just did a large chopping into this cast iron skillet. There is butter in this skillet. Get it nice and hot. Add your potatoes and your onions if you want to add onions. And then you just fry them until they are golden and add your salt and pepper. You want to add any seasonings once they are almost done or even once they are done. Especially your salt because that will draw out the moisture and you won't get as crispy of a fried potato. To go with these fried potatoes, I am making chicken patties. We usually do some form of a salmon or a tuna patty, usually tuna, but I did not have tuna on this day. I only had canned chicken. Now, judge me if you will, but I love canned chicken. We have eaten it my whole life, and so it is just one of those things that I like to have on hand. I don't pressure can myself right now. I'd love to learn, 
but it's one of those things that it just intimidates me. And so I haven't, so I had this on hand. I always keep it on hand for times like this. And so that's what we're having today is chicken patties. And as it goes, the next day we are back to spring and even summer temperatures and weather. Look at the beauty. I realized that we were out of frozen cookie dough. I make big batches of cookie dough regularly and keep them in my freezer. They're pre-scooped out and I love it. I love being able to sneak in <laughs> after the kids go to bed and have a cookie dough or two. And I love having it ready if we have somewhere to be or something that we're going to that I need to bring a dish to. I can always pull out cookies or if, you know, someone stops by or you need a last minute dessert, cookies are a great thing. And so on this day, I realized we were out and that just cannot be. So I decided I would go ahead and fill my baking jars here and get to cracking on some chocolate chip cookies. I ran out of regular chocolate chip. So these are regular and white chocolate cookies. I'm softening my butter with a mason jar that I warmed with hot water first and then dumping that water out, placing it over these sticks of butter and letting it sit for a little while. This will just soften the butter. While that softens, I'm just getting my dry ingredients together and then I'm going ahead and creaming the butter and both sugars, the brown and white sugar together. Now I'm going to add my eggs. Now I did a double batch of this cookie dough, so it did call for four eggs in a double batch. I like to have a lot of cookies on hand, y'all. This recipe calls for some form of a liquid added. It's not very much, but I usually will do hot water or buttermilk. In this case, I went ahead and just used some buttermilk. Then I'm adding in all my dry ingredients slowly and then my chocolate chips. And I am going to scoop these onto a cookie sheet and then freeze them, flash freeze them, and then they will be stored in a gallon size bag in the freezer. While those were freezing, I got started on our spring bedding. I thrifted this sage green, it's kind of a yellowy green sheet set, and I was so excited to put it on the bed. It was freshly washed and dried. I love putting fresh bedding on our bed.
We are still having some chilly nights though, so a quilt is necessary. I pulled this one that I kept on the couch last year for spring and put it at the end of our bed for this year because it's a little too big for the couch. I love the green tones with a little bit of blue and pink in this quilt set. It just reminds me of something in a John Sloan painting. I don't know. Quilts. There's always quilts in John Sloan's paintings. Not always, but he has a lot of paintings with quilts in them. And I love it. That's how I want my life to feel. Like a John Sloan painting. <laughs> 